All right, what's going on, guys? Welcome back to Car Talk. As always, joined by Tyler and Lou. And on today's episode, which is likely, what is this, our second to last episode of the year? Yep, this is second episode to last, second to last episode. 24. We're 24 episodes in. Next week, we're going to uh, do a, a season's best, we'll call it, right? A season's best for Card Talk. So this is going to be a, uh, a full episode Q&A on this one. Going to get into a couple different topics before then, and we'll start with the newest superstar for the Los Angeles Lakers. The, 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 I mean, the superstar makes the most sense in my eyes. I mean, that is Talon Horton Tucker, or if you're Tyler, Talon Horton Tucker. Either way, 30, what, three points. LeBron's tweeting at him. I saw a tweet say he's probably getting invited over for Taco Tuesday. A lot's going on. Great ending to 2020 for, for Taylor Horton Tucker. Tyler, Lou, what are you seeing? I'm seeing a lot of mistakes being made. Is what I'm seeing. <laughs> I'm seeing a lot of futures being placed in the form of eBay purchases on him making the All-Star game this year. Mm-hmm. I, I guess I would love uh, I would love to understand when you see it, when we see it time and time again, right? And it's not just new people who are making this purchase. It's people who are in the car game every single day of their lives, right? In some form or fashion. I would love to know the rationalization for making that pie. What were you saying? Optic hollows were a hundred bucks. Yeah. I think the last one did like 120. I, I need to understand how that makes any sense. Wh- who is this guy? No disrespect to him. Like he could be an awesome player, right? Who is this guy? How does he rash? How do you rash out 120 bucks on him on a raw hollow? I I don't see it. Have you seen any graded hit eBay or anything? I haven't. I mean, this is just more like talking through, like seeing this in Instagram stories, seeing this on Twitter, seeing what this stuff sells for. Some of my employees mentioned it earlier today that they had sold like an optic hollow off eBay for like eighty dollars, and uh, I mean. I saw some highlights. Like I told you guys before we started, I saw some highlights. He, he, I mean, this like step back three or jumper he hit towards the three point line looked re- pretty nice. He had a couple nice takes to the rim, but like, like Lou said, a th- PSA nine optic hollow sold for $500. A what? A PSA nine optic hollow sold for $500. Non auto, non auto PSA nine. That's, that's outrageous. Is that's, that that's like firm, like off auction, or was it a buy firm now? Firm buy oh. now purchase. So, here's a little education on on Horton Tucker. Mm-hmm. Horton Tucker on June 20th, 2019, was selected as the 46th overall pick in the 2019 NBA draft by the Orlando Magic. On draft night, he was traded to the Los Angeles Lakers in exchange for a 2020 second round pick in cash considerations. So they like the man's game. Yeah, I mean, LeBron's- with the Lakers. He was assigned to their G League affiliate, South Bay Lakers. He made his NBA mm-hmm. debut in December against the T Wolves. He played in the bubble. He was in the bubble, and uh, he scored nine points in ten minutes off the bench in Game Five of Western Conference Semifinals. Horton Tucker is the second youngest player in NBA history to win a championship at 19 years and 322 days. Fantastic. Let's talk about a couple like that. That's nice. But like, yeah, let's talk I, about it real quick. <laughs> and I, I agree with Lou. Like Lou said, that, like we've seen this before. It wasn't last year in the preseason. Wasn't it TJ Warren? T- in we, the bubble. TJ Warren went off in the bubble. Okay, the bubble, right? Like TJ Warren. Like, yeah, I mean, uh, obviously Taylor Horn Tucker's 19, and there's, you know, you play next to LeBron, so you're going to get extra eyes. It just, if if Taylor Horton Tucker is, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I have a hard be wrong about this, but someone yeah. paying four hundred and fifty dollars for an of one ninety nine PSA ten Don Russ Taylor Horton Tucker makes no sense to me. I went through boxes this morning in in our shop and found a Taylor Horton Tucker Blue Contenders Optic Auto at nine ninety nine, and they're listed for like three fifty or best offer. You can almost get me there on autos because that's a little bit different, but an of one ninety nine. Don Russ PSA 10 selling for $450 is like, you know, like do people also, realize- shout, out to, shout out to the person who graded 
who's been grading Taylor Horton Tucker this whole time. Grinding. That's a grind, and I respect that in a real way. But I don't understand that by at all. Ryan, you were about to eloquently say Yeah, I just, I mean, $450 is a lot of money. You can buy a lot of things with $450. To spend it on a Donruss PSA 10 out of 199 of a guy who has had 60 points ever, two of them are in preseason, you know, most of that's in a preseason game. Just, it just seems like naive. Like, it just seems silly. I mean, like, if Taylor Horton Tucker's really, really good, Long term, there's a lot of his cards. You can buy one three years from now. Why buy one now? Michael Porter Jr. is two hundred and eighty dollars. You could almost buy two Michael Porter Juniors for that one card. Yeah. Now and again, like the like the perspective of what might be possible, it's the unknown that actually is driving the hype. It, it's crazy. It's actually that people don't know about him that it's selling for more. I mean, obviously a LeBron tweet is amazing, but like we said before, like I'm pretty sure LeBron's tweeted that Quinn Cook is like a legendary player himself. I don't maybe LeBron's him. just trying to get him, you know, get him get him some trade value. He's like, Yeah, hey, or maybe he's sitting on a couple of his rookies. Or maybe he likes his game. Like that's also super on the table yeah. as well. Yeah, or building and, a little confidence for the guy because he's yeah. his teammate. Like, oh wait, we might need him, so I better start hey, building man, up maybe, a little bit. Maybe that Kyle Kuzma guy we got ain't really that maybe, good. Yeah, maybe Kuzma's hey, going out the door Dalen. so we need someone to fill in. Yeah. Possibly. But like, but of course, like we always talk about the awareness thing and eyes bring value and all that. But I, I just, I don't see it with this one. I got a thought. I love when you have a thought. Tell me more. Wax. What do you mean wax? Like these situations are why holding wax has mm-hmm. a ton of value. You throw it a dart at the all whole class. All of a sudden, people are, I mean, tonight, no doubt about it on Instagram Casino Live, there's <laughs> going to be a couple headlines that are like on the on the tail and hunt. Like, what? Yeah, is he even in prism? He's not in prism, right? No, he doesn't have prism. But so someone's, op- rip- ripping. someone's ripping optic tonight and going to go crazy when they get a purple ice or whatever. Oh, <laughs> tail and purple. It's just, that's crazy to me, man. I don't see that at all. And... And it I hope it happens time and time. Mouth, and I really I would lo- nothing would be happier. I would even, if he's good, even if he averages 12 minutes this year and averages 4.7 points a game, like what are we really talking about here? If he, it, I hope in the 2021 rap show, we're getting punched in the mouth with this clip. I just don't see it. Yeah, right. Anything uh, in your life in sports cards obviously the rookie matters the rookie card but i'm trying to think of guys that have i mean Kawhi came on late like i'm trying to think who some of the late 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 second round picks that have risen to the level again if you're spending 450 dollars on anything raw like the dude better make an all-star game i uh, like i remember this uh, yeah, like I look at this, and again, basketball is different than football. But like, it ha- you have you see it all the time in preseason football. Like, I watch so much preseason football versus basketball. I just don't, I don't watch as much of it. Like, one guy has like an eighty yard run. Like, I remember it was a couple years ago, wide receiver for like the Seahawks. I think is, I think it was like John. Or I tried looking it up. Ur- Ursua, U R S U A had like. 200 yards in a preseason game dude didn't even make the roster he had like a rookie card from like unparalleled went for like 40 bucks like oh my gosh this guy's the next great thing russell wilson's number one target like it, it's it's preseason right like if taylor horton tucker comes out on day one starts and puts up 30 points real conversation preseason game against scrubs not as concerned so i just yeah. like overreaction monday again i think the thing is is that what we need to largely say is you're gambling mm-hmm. on that heavily. And if you're in a position to lay 450 down on a on a gamble that might be cut in half. If you're an amazing Lakers fan, you want to collect this stuff and that's why you're buying it. Mazel Tov. Amazing. If you're a Lakers collector, if you're a Talon Horn Tucker collector, enjoy the cards by all means. If you're I- hoping for returns as the investor class of sports cards. 
that is a very high risk asset. And you just need to be aware of that. If this is like, I'm three months in and like, I'm, I'm going to be smarter than everyone. It's like very high risk could be some high return, but you're also getting in pretty high. But I think this also speaks to the idea that we talked about before about like low risk, high reward potential with some of these rookies, right? Like 46th pick, I think you said, not really a, a guy on the radar for many people. You could have probably got an optic hollow. Like, uh, Lou, what was an optic hollow of Taylor Horton Tucker selling for a month ago? I'm checking right now. Like beginning of November, what are we looking at for Taylor Horton Tucker optic hollows? I'm looking. Um, I'm also. I also want to say, Ty, you're saying like it get cut in half. Like we just did this with Clyde Taylor, or Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Like it's like way more than half. Like it's a hundred dollars to to five dollars. Mm-hmm. Really? Um, okay, a month ago for Young Talon. There's so many sales happening in the last ten pages of sales in the last four days. This is crazy. This is mm-hmm. nuts. Oh my god. FOMO. Mm-hmm. No kidding. You, November twenty fifth. November twenty fifth. There was a optic, a raw optic that sold for twenty two dollars. Um, there was an up one. F- yeah, I'm sorry, optic hollow. Uh, there was a. Blue Velocity that sold for eleven dollars. A base was a dollar. A lot of five for fifteen dollars. Like this stuff was super available. His one of one sold for twenty five hundred dollars. Apparently, according to eBay, October twenty first. It's also interesting being on the Lakers in the sense of, again, like how I think certain things can materialize over time. The Lakers are an absolute right now win first mentality and to your point about the lebron trade value like the chiefs are too mm-hmm. and when clyde edward hilaire went off it was like they actually are playing him less to save him for the big game and they go out and sign another running back and like cut into his, his performance and like he might they might even be like you know great trade piece and like bring him in for like give them away for like a pick and a left tackle or something like that. Like you got to realize that this is a second year, late second round pick that if they, if he shows flashes in early in the season, like he might be on the jazz shortly before the trade line for like a key piece for down the stretch. And I don't think he's as interesting once he's on the jazz. Sure. Yep. Yeah, I, so it, like it's all about timing, right? I mean, it's right situation, right time. Yeah. If if he's on the Jazz right now, putting up twenty five points, this discussion's probably not as severe as him putting up thirty five or thirty three points for the Lakers and LeBron tweeting about it. I just think there's a lot of other things that played into this, you know, explosion. Yep. Um, let's shift gears a little bit. Conversation we touched on it last week. Um, we touched on it again briefly, very briefly. The breaking game saw boardroom breakers got into uh, it. Rich Kleiman and, and the boardroom podcast announced a little bit of a breaking situation. There's this app Loop or Lupe Loop that I, I've seen bubbling up a little bit. That like is a is a place that everyone can pretty much tap into, and like they're going to bring an audience. So if I have the app, I can click on the app, and instead of be following everyone on Instagram, it's on Instagram Live. They just do all the back end, and it's like, okay, blah, blah, blah. It's kind of like going to Atlantic City, and it's like, do you go to the Borgata? Do you go to the Trop? What do you kind of go to? What am I looking for? At the end of the day, you can play blackjack at all of them. Um, just want to tap into a little bit, and Rye, I know you you have uh, a bit of the breaking business shove. You've been doing it forever. This notion of if you're pretty much – and as a lot of big money is coming in to the hobby, meaning institutional money, meaning different thinking around money. Right now, to run a, a breaker is if I just started one tomorrow, my mindset is like, oh, I'm acquiring a casino license without having to operate a casino. Because I've been listening a lot to people recently. And even my dad, now that we're in Jersey, never he was not betting sports and then now that he is DraftKings, like he bets like five dollars on games and i think that that i'm like uh 
it's going to bring a lot of people into cards, but there's going to be a confusion that it's about cards. Well, I mean, that's, but, but it, it's just not just breaking that's gambling. The whole thing is break gambling. Buying yeah, wax, but, holding wax, buying, getting into a group break, buying your own box, buying Taylor and Horton Tucker. I mean, everything's a gamble. Definitely, but that's, there's a lot more work than just pulling up a live, sending a memo, and hoping that gotcha. whatever so, you get back. Yeah, I, I view I view the breaking, like the personal box breaks or during a group break, as a slot machine. Yeah, hit, hit me, hit me. Hit me again, right? Just keep hitting the machine and max bet, max bet, max bet over and over and over again. And then you're down 2,500 bucks. And I mean, the, the only difference with- You get some product. You get something. You're walking away, not empty handed. Mm-hmm. You're walking away empty handed when you go in the casino. If you're spending $2,500 and you're just like, I mean, yeah, sure. You could hit big too. But if you're just going to keep going until you're out, I mean, you just keep hitting, 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 hitting. It might give you a couple hours worth of fun, but you're not guaranteed to walk out with something. With, mm-hmm. with buying boxes and ripping boxes and group breaks, for the most part, I mean, there are certainly breaks. You're not guaranteed something. Ty, but. Ty and Ryan, have you noticed the way I have that everyone's entry point is breaking now? Yeah, it's easiest. It's the easiest. It's the singular thing that gets people the most interested. And it's 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 also cheap. I, if if retail wasn't as in demand as it is. Retail would be the entry point. That's most. I don't think that's true, by the way. I still I, think breaking would be it. it, it it's up there. I mean, a, a kid isn't going to get on YouTube and join a break. Uh, to me, I don't think a, a 13 year old is going to get on YouTube and join a break as much as they're going to go to Walmart with their mom shopping for groceries and buy a blaster box if it was available. It's not yeah. available. Well, so, yeah. I think that's where most younger players would start. I think, you, Lou, your point is well taken if it's someone our age. I don't think we're as yeah, I also think there's a there's very much a culture for kids of like microtransactions of games on their phone. Like I think someone opening up Instagram and if they know what PayPal is, which I'm sure a lot of kids do, I'm positive that they know how to send somebody 50 bucks on PayPal. Positive. Yeah. Do they have access to that money? I don't know. But that's and, on the And do, are the breakers yeah. smart enough to like get down to that place of like, okay, yeah, we'll take your transaction. Yeah, I just to me the average 13 year old seems likelier to go into a Walmart, buy a blaster box if it's available. I but, just see yeah, this more but, but and more. I agree more. with Lou hundred percent. It's going that way where younger generation. It's amazing. Breaking is the singular biggest entry point. Cause I'm like, Oh, it- MGM is going to try to get into breaking bar, like bar stool with pen gaming. Like it's there's, what is the difference? Like, what are and we talking about here? We, I think I just saw a thing from Ryan that that didn't make sense in his head. A little bit, right? right? I think your initial reaction to that was like, huh? What, MGM? MGM, yeah. Barstool, Pen Game. No, I mean, the one thing about it that just, it, it seems like it's super desirable. It's, it's got to be super desirable. It's not regulated. That's Yeah, it's crazy. This is an unregulated business. You're talking yeah. about a billion dollar industry that is not regulated. You can get in and do whatever you want. Yeah. Cr- I mean, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, and I think we're seeing a lot of that because as the money gets bigger and the table stakes get higher, it's like you're telling me that I can operate a casino, bar stool, everything that they've built, and then the big thing they do, they go out and get a sports book. Like the amount of legal lease behind that, the amount of loot, like you know, state this, that, and the other thing, and then you can just pop open Instagram and freaking pay twenty bucks and get fifty bucks maybe, or maybe you get two dollars or whatever. But like, if I'm an operator, put me in that business. Yep, 100%. especially because there's breaking nothing else is, that people can do on Friday night anyway. Breaking is the single biggest aspect of the hobby right now. Well, it's I'm, it's. I'm excited so, to see so much like, of it. Uh, innovation that will happen. Me too. I'm excited as well. Yep. These That's the one area in a world where this whole hobby has has gotten a lot of different uh, changes in the last 18 months. Breaking is the one that seems to be the most stagnant quote unquote, in terms of like ways of working. It's still pretty uh, like a lot of friction from like, you go on the Instagram, you have to find out what the PayPal is you're sending to. You have to send the PayPal. You have to tell me something PayPal. They have to see your message in the sea of messages. Like it's still, or you have to go on their website and like, Blah, 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 and they have to cross check the website. Like, so there's some sort of innovation that isn't there yet that will be interesting. I think. Yeah, where you check I out one day, like, like and it takes you com. right to a camera, takes you right to a camera where somebody's ready with your box, they're ready to rip it, and you don't even wait 60 seconds, and you're in a room and you're breaking, and it's easy. Mm-hmm. 
you're going from payment to breaking in 60 seconds. A camera personal for you. Love Interesting. It. So. And a lot of what we're talking about is the way that, um, I don't know if it's the right term, but like China, that's the way they shop through influencers. Boom. Yeah, cool. I mean, now I'm in this virtual room. What do you got for me? Boom. Transaction's done. My credit card is already plugged into my cell phone bill anyway. Where you go. See ya. Yeah, like in, in the same, in I just, I don't know how realistic this is, but like the way that Instagram is building out shopping, like it's sort of built for that in a way. You know what I mean? Yeah. What, what will get tricky though is like Instagram isn't going to allow these transactions because at some point someone's going to be like, like at some point I know the government's really slow, but they're going to maybe see the CNBC article about this boom that's happening and be like, how can we make some money off that? And then Instagram's going to be like, we're not, you know, all right, no more like retail things to like at whatever, whatever, like you can't, sure. you're operating a casino on our platform. It's very interesting. Yep. All right, so we are going to get into Q and A. As always, these are questions we take from listeners. So if you ever want to reach out to us and get us a question to ask on the show, Card Talk Pod is the Instagram and the Twitter username there, Twitter handle. Yeah, if you're watching on video, it's right there. I'm trying to watch us figure it all out. This Tyler is pointing completely the wrong direction. All right, Lou Tyler, anybody got a question ready to go that they're uh, they're intrigued by? Yes, absolutely. Ooh, what do you got? Um, my first question here is from Joe's underscore card underscore shack. Shout out to Joe for the question. Um, his question is, how much does the look of a card, team color, or photography impact value? Why this question caught my eye was for two reasons. One, Tyler, I know you and I have talked. You've gotten very into color, color prisms. And separately, there's been another conversation, I think, that's always in the background and like part of it to where like prism is considered the main card, but they very much do not have the best photography. It's not even close. I actually was talking about this with my dad yesterday, watching the jets game. We were talking about baseball cards and you know, Bowman's like Bowman cards are like just whatever. But when you look at a product like stadium club, it's like beautiful photography. The cards are awesome. Stadium club's awesome. It's a phenomenal product. The, the photography is great, but the, the values just don't equate. Um, so I don't know if there'll ever be some sort of rec- quote unquote reckoning there or like change in the, in the guard on that. But I um, just want to get your guys thoughts. I think the, the, you're with that. I think about it in two, two, in two ways, really uh, a, a collector and then an investor. Mm-hmm. Like for me, the collector, like stadium club is the, the single nicest photography I've seen on cards. It's it not is, even close. It's awesome. So stadium club, baseball for sure. I mean, they look amazing as a collector. You want cool cards like that. So, like there, I know there's a Kyle Lewis in there. That's pretty cool. I think it's like him in the dugout. There's the Boba Shett with the, uh, is it Boba Shett? Uh, Boba Shett or it might be a Mariner. It might be Kyle Lewis base. I don't remember from stadium club baseball this year with like, uh, it's in Seattle and it's got the whole open stadium in the background and you can it's Kyle Lewis, Kyle Lewis. See, so, uh, Lou knows what I'm talking about. Um, yeah, just the photography is great on that. But Stadium Club doesn't really sell that great in baseball, right? Somebody's going to want to top Kyle Lewis gold rookie over a you know a Stadium Club auto for the most part. I would assume without looking, that, that card's probably higher. Um, so I think it, it matters. Uh, as I've evolved in my thinking and approach, I think it matters tremendously and even more so probably than people – realize or give credit to like when you just say kind of like at the end of the day what's doing well is going to do well and like tops but i think that that is the way that things get there kaboom wouldn't matter if it wasn't like the reaction is like that's dope now if there's people that can see kaboom and be like kaboom sought after and that's why i buy it but it's like it's sought after because of how good of a job it did as an insert right um Key in point is I, I was texting about this two days ago. I think that the tops Chrome UEFA Champions League mm-hmm. are some of the worst designed mm-hmm. cards that I the have new ever one? seen. The new ones. Hmm. And I Ryan, don't Ryan loves understand. <laughs> I don't understand. Like there was this whole debate of like, is it going to be Holland, you know, uh, Erling Holland, uh, Bundesliga or tops Chrome? Like the, these, blue belt the refractors 
like a like the color, and I'm gonna pull up this. So I'm describing it. Here's an Mbappe like blue bubble. Like, Thanks, man. like this is what you're giving me? Like the little blue on the side? Like a purple tops chrome. Like you like this is the base. And the only thing you're gonna change up a little bit, this is a silver, I guess, is like over here. And so when we when you get into it and play it out, I, I think it really matters at least to like start a foundation. Downtown cards, I think, are interesting. Yeah, I think they're really cool. Yeah, the Mahomes um, downtown that, Super Bowl card is one of my favorite cards. And you were talking to me about that. Um, and I was going off of the notion of cards that look cool. I also think big slabs are going to are going to start to gain a lot of attention because of the feel of them, because of the weight of them, because of how they can be displayed a little bit more. This sportscaster series, the 77 to 79 sportscaster cards, I think are crazy. Leaf did like a little actually like throwback to it, but there's this George Mike in all these legends, this bird or that's not, that's Jack Sigma. Uh, there's a bird one that's super dope. And I'm like, they're bigger and they're, they look beautiful to me. And so maybe the collector hat, but I think that you can call that the collector hat. But at the end of the day, that is then what it elicits emotion and that's what people want to collect. And if something becomes collectible, that means there's going to then be investors that want to buy it and flip it for more and create a draw demand about it. So I think it's actually everything. Like even down to why did sports cards get big initially? If you go back to the early designs, they're like some really dope stuff. If you see really old stuff, typically you're either like, that's really cool. Or like, that's really beat and ugly. Like, I think it's everything. See, I see a lot of interest in, uh, I pay more attention to the, the team color versus mm -hmm. the, the insert, like Luca prism, blue Trey prism, red Kobe white prism, red. Like those are big cards. Those are cards. People want for sure. Why? Aesthetics. Because they look really good. Aesthetics. Yeah, sure. Right, Where but like I said, Kyle Lewis Top Stadium Club Auto looks really cool. Nobody's buying it. Like it's not like a million dollar card. I don't even know who Kyle Lewis is. So yeah, but no, but Tyler, even relevant to even relevant to Top Series Two, it's not in the same universe. Got it. It's just one of these weird things. It's yeah. it's one of those the, things. The market like, decides. The market, the market decides, decides but I think much less. Like I think the market initially probably made a decision based on the execution of that. Yeah, I still would love. Uh, I would love to go backwards in time and figure out what about Prism made Prism that. Like I, I would remember just buying Carl Anthony Towns Prism Silver rookies for fifteen dollars. I remember, but it was the it, when it came out. It, I this is a question. When it came out, it was it became the go to product, right? I mean, it was cool, but like I said, the rookie silvers didn't really sell a lot. I, I remember what was, the, what was the main what was the main rookie card to buy in two thousand and thirteen for NBA. 13, 14, I was young. Um, I remember so that, that would have been Anthony Bennett, Oladipo. Oladipo, I was pretty big. But that was a pretty – Giannis too, right? Yeah, 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 Giannis. But Giannis wasn't the huge thing at the time. I remember buying 27 Giannis Prism rookies for $10 a piece. 27 of them gemmed yeah, every single also, one. Maybe there wasn't, and it didn't really happen. Cause that was, that was, research, that was a, but... that was a really bad period for cards that year, that those two years. Cause that's like 2013 for football was EJ Manuel, Geno yeah, Smith, Matt Barkley. The best three guys are Le'Veon Bell, Travis Kelsey, and DeAndre Hopkins. And they weren't like, it was Giovanni Bernard at the time. It was Le'Veon. Like it was man, you know, EJ Manuel, Geno Smith. And then the next year, like I remember in 2014, that was a, uh, the second to last year for tops. And that's when like Topps Chrome came out and you had Topps Chrome Mini and like Topps Chrome boxes. I remember they were $60 and they literally went on sale like two weeks later for like $48 a box. Like that was a, that was a pretty tough year for cards. Yeah. That two year stretch. Need to, I, I need to do the research and like understand why that happened. And if those things change, like, I don't know, like there's just something about, uh, it just doesn't make any sense to me. Why a card that doesn't look as good as another card sells for more just because everyone says, I know we, we've talked about this and it is what it is kind of thing, but I don't understand it fully. And like the, the mindset that goes into all that for everyone is very interesting to me. Cause I'm the same way. You get prism if you're selling. 
because it's what it's what's in demand yeah and when, yeah. when did that start and why did that start you know panini when they took over the license they probably said all right we need to fragment you know our consumer groups you need a, a premier one and you need a like base one and you need really like a really mass market one um and i think that the the, the design and and premium matters but to that i i do think inherently it does matter over time and and the parallels like you were saying about the team colors the team colors are hot because they're hot and they look good and i think that whether you quantify it a little bit or a lot of it over time i think it matters more than people realize again this is a purple refractor yeah kurt stinks and i'm like what happened to like it purple. being all purple and stuff where's the purple <laughs> you know what, I mean? what like, happened what? to it being purple and stuff <laughs> I'm like, what, where's, what are we talking about? I mean, you're talking about a third of an eighth of the card. An like, eighth. I mean, like, tucked in the corner. Like, you know, like, I think a refractor, a colored refractor, you should be able to pick it up and be like, oh. That- Top Scrum Baseball doesn't have any issues with that. It looks great. I just it didn't understand the execution. I'm like, what's going on? Tyler, real quick for me, just yeah. I, I we're going to move on because we've been here for a couple minutes now. Pull up those two links I just sent you, and then you tell me which card is nicer. Tyler is going to pull up a Boba. Sh- By the way, it was Boba Shed. It wasn't Kyle Lewis. We were bugging Ryan. That's what I thought. You took with the needle in the background. It's the needle, and I for some reason I was like, yeah. "That's Seattle." I thought it was um, Boba Shed. It is Boba Shed. So one is going to be the Boba Shed Stadium Club, and the other is going to be his Topps Chrome. And I wanted to just look at those two cards. Like this is a beautiful card. Look how this cool is this card looks. Dope ass card. Look how mm-hmm. cool that is. Mm-hmm. And then you compare it to the Topps Chrome. It looks a lot like the Topps Chrome UEFA, and it's like not even close. And I mm-hmm. don't get it. And that costs five dollars. It's crazy. Yeah, I think maybe another way to put it is now. I think Topps Chrome is. Uh, let me stop sharing that. Go back here. I think it's a way that can differentiate your product. Meaning, to, and uh, I know nothing about baseball, Ryan. Is Topps Chrome a more sought after product in general than Stadium Club? Yeah, sure. It's, I mean, it's Chrome. Right? The Chrome Prism type brands do pretty well. So maybe Stadium Club has been put in that spot and people don't care about it. But if Topps Chrome introduced a Stadium Club look, they did. They came out this year. Topps Chrome Stadium Club. It's a new, it's a brand new this year. It's just a Chrome Stadium Club, though, Ty. That yeah. it, it still doesn't, doesn't have, compete. Doesn't have juice. It still doesn't compete. No, it's not gonna. I mean, it's cool. You got some cool stuff. It just it's not top Chrome. Got it. It's not it's the weird. flagship. Mm. All right, so I got a question. Like, I'm I'm intrigued by this. Um, not sure there's much to say about it, but I certainly want to give it a little shot here. So this is from it looks like Crusher Cards, K R U S H E R, and then Cards with a Z, and it says I'm, I'm intrigued. It says, do you feel 2020 cards will hold special value because of the pandemic? No. Definitely not. What would be considered a 2020 card? Mm, something produced this year. What's the biggest set that came out this year? 1920 Prism Basketball. Yeah, I, I, my, my answer would be no, because generally everyone's just going to think about it as the greatest year in cards ever. So the like start of the boom. Yeah, like people are going to be talking about Le- Jordan, you know, LeBron going from three to whatever. Charizard. Charizard. Uh, but, you know, all the 2012 Prism run up. Like, I yeah. think it's just going to be general about what people what people own. And then it's gonna be like, oh, 2020 was like the year. So I, I've got something to continue off of this then. So 2020, right? What the year is and what it will mean in time. What about playing off of that? Will Washington Redskins or Cleveland Indian cards mm. be a collector, mm. a collectible thing in time? Are Redskins cards? Like, are you? I, like I just mean because for- the name's going away. Yeah, no, I don't think it's so. it's an interesting take. Um, Not saying they will or won't. I'm just more curious. I what you think, think like maybe Jim Tomey on the Cleveland Indians might. He was a good Cleveland Indian, right? Mm-hmm. Pretty sure. Uh, I think certain players will, but like 
does a random dude on the Brooklyn Dodgers card sell more? Maybe because of its age or something like that. Yeah. I feel like that convo gets into a little bit of like, um, you know, old school memorabilia more because it's more about like yeah. the fandom. Like I have no interest in collecting the, the Washington Redskins or it's like the, the, uh, okay. We have an example. Do Tampa Bay devil rays stuff sell better? Like the OG logo and stuff. Definitely not. Blues are baseball guys. So, but Definitely. if you're like, a I hard devil rays fan, you probably break out the windbreaker with the devil rays and like color logo every once in a while. It's kind of yeah, hard to think about so. it. I don't think so. Yeah, I, I'm not saying it does. I can't see any scenario where you're like, man, that card's going to do really well long term. The thought somebody mentioned it earlier that since the Redskins changed their name this year, there are some Chase Young cards that have only Redskins and some will have, you know, Washington football team. So for instance, yeah, if Trey, it's yeah. like a very specific scenario. I was going to say like error yeah. card and stuff like that. Yeah, like Trey, I, or, I think long term, the Washington football team name is a dub, by the way. Yeah, me too. I agree. Do you think? That uh, Burrow and Herbert and all them get to go to the rookie premiere next year to get like an actual photo shoot done or what? No, because you have in game photos to use. You won't need photo uh, shoot. Yeah. You won't need photo shoot photos. Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day though. Like they never actually got the photo shoot and all that. All right, Ty. What uh, what question you got? I got one ready. If you don't, uh, you go. So this is an interesting one. This is from OGO underscore Sports Cards. It says, what is missing from a technology standpoint that would improve the card market? Hmm. Um, I, I mean, you don't know what things. you don't I know. I got a couple of things. I got a couple of things. I think uh, the a, a single source for um, pop report lookup and one that works very well to be able to like trace ownership. Like, so I, what I would say is, pretty much blockchain like yes it, but like a block qr codes version. yeah qr codes of like give me the sales history on this very quick like where this you know it's got a barcode like where did it sell when did it sell and and that takes a lot of different parties being involved and like you're talking about building full stack and maybe our partner ebay is like up to that um but i th- to me that would be big meaning like okay you're at dallas show you see a card you could kind of just get the quick down and dirty history on it. Um, that's a big ask. Obviously, the simple answer, grading, um, the next iteration of, of that. We touched on it a little bit earlier in the episode with uh, some technological advancements in like what breaking is and means. I think people are going to be doing um, deals with, you know, PSA that, and that's already started to happen, but I think CCG, who's, they're, they're going to be striking up some of these partnerships with breakers where it's like, cool, they break sends and then we just send it to them. Like everything gets graded, you know, um, those are kind of some of the things that come quickly top of mind. Well, anything come to mind? Um, I think the biggest thing on my mind recently, we talked about it before is ease of use for breaking. Like what is, what is the one touch to I'm, or the the two touch to I'm in an Instagram group, uh, I'm in an Instagram live, and I know that I know that the Jets is one hundred and eighty five dollars to do this break in this prism. What do I do to do that quicker and more seamlessly for both sides, for me as the buyer and Ryan as the breaker? Yeah, I like uh, kind of building off of Tyler's. I- I think a QR code, Tyler's 100% right. It involves a lot of parties. But what if there was a QR code on a card that you could, you know, you scan this card and it matches up size so you know if the card's ever trimmed. If it's a game use, if it's a patch card, you see the original patch so you know the patch hasn't been altered, right? Like it takes you directly to a pop report. It takes you to eBay sales listings. I think there's a lot you can do if you have a QR code that takes you to like this central hub. And it just seems it, it seems pretty challenging uh, in, in all honesty with how many cards are made and how many cards are being made. Um but some sort of way to trace the card back to the origin, see the the, the population report with it, the size again with, with trimming. Um, I just think there's a lot that you could do around that. I think Lou's point is well taken too, though. Like the the instant gratification with with cards seems to to be continuously growing. 
um, being able, yeah, I just, uh, I, I like that idea a lot. Like if you want to bet on sports, right. And you're watching the, the Steelers and bills play, you know, Sunday night, you can go in game and bet immediately and place a bet right then, right there. And you know, it, it happens. So the, the instant, the quicker results on a lot of that, I, I think that will be that I, I see that playing out in cards, how it plays out. I don't know yet. Um, but I see that playing out in, in cards. Yeah. And I also think the way you're saying like right now you can just go on and bet in a game in real time. Like we're 10 years into that technology, like happening, like the gambling technology and like ease of use and legalization and all that stuff. So, and it's like, the it same thing. Time. It's the same thing for grading, right? You want a card graded very quickly. It costs more money and there are people willing to do it. Right. So are you, would you pay 5% more if you knew a box, a break was guaranteed to break in 30 minutes? Should pay 5% more? Yeah, probably. Probably. Yeah, time is right? fun. If you knew you could actually you, dopamine, you're paying for dopamine. Yep, you're going to break in 30 minutes, guaranteed 100%. You're paying 5%. Yeah, more. There's, there's nothing worse than going into a break and then you buy it and you go back an hour. Like you're back I, an hour later. Really, still has two it's of the, the three breaks, I fell asleep. Yeah, it's the worst. You know, actually, random on that point, this is not related to that, but do you, do you think PSA, it would, people would be happier with PSA and BGS and SGC and whoever else if they told you what your grades were? Like, I submit on a 20 day. They guarantee me, quote unquote guarantee, they guarantee me I know what my grade is in 20 days, but I don't get my cards back for a little while longer. Do you think that would make people a little bit happier? And they would feel less pressure to if be less negative knew, energy towards PSA. Uh, so it's going to come down to how long How long is the after and can the grades change? That's, yeah, that's. No, you, uh, do, you, they're going to do, they're going to do the actual grading process for you. But the, the uh, production of getting it into the slab and shipping it back to you takes an extra two or three they have to Like they only grade it the second they slab it because then they have a risk of. Right. It's like the, yeah, it's like sure. the vaccine. Like you got to hold yeah. it at the correct temperature. Yeah. I'm also, I also think I just like reinvented the wheel of what a rock card review is, but whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It just seems unlikely you would grade a card and just leave it for three months. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I think that putting it in the slab is probably the easiest part, part of the, yeah, yeah. Of the whole yeah. situation. Yeah. That's, Ty, that's, yeah. So never mind. I'm, just a, I'm an idiot. Is I do I'm have saying. another good one because we talked about this earlier oh, in the season. Oh, oh, oh. I think this is, this is, a great point because this is kind of maybe eating our words a little. We'll see. But it says, has your this is from Captain Fernando23. Has your view on Josh Allen changed at all? Oh, yeah. With the success of the Bills this season. He's so good. He's really good. He is he is an NFL quarterback. I'm sorry. I texted Lou the other day. I was watching the Bills game here at my house. And we don't text about Bills football. And Josh Allen makes more rolling to the right cannon throws than I've seen any quarterback make in a long time. He delivers the ball hard and accurate and is strong. And so I don't know if I was shitting on him. Probably was because Sammy's my guy and I have freaks with the Jets. But he delivers the biscuit. I mean, look, he's got talent. I mean, the things we do to have Stephon Diggs as a target – would be all time amazing, but he throws some balls, man. He throws some balls. Lou, wait, what's man. your thought here, real quick, on this? This will be a quick one. I just want to. It's it's tough. <laughs> it's tough because I I don't think it's a fair thing because like he's put in such a better position than most teams sure put their quarterbacks in. His team, and this is a credit to the Bills, and it's a credit to him for succeeding in the system he's in and all that stuff. He, the entire team is built around him, which is obviously how it should be done. I think his skill set doesn't translate over into a long term career. I think a lot of his career, a lot of his skills right now, the things I mean, like Todd was like, oh yeah, like he rolls out to the right and blah, blah, blah. Like as he gets older, that's not going to keep happening. Dude, well, last night. He did. Uh, he dropped back. Uh, I think like five step drop. Steps up, tucks the ball, takes like a hit on his arm, and delivered a biscuit. I'm like, we pretty much were watching a young Ben Roethlisberger, a more athletic version of Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah, except Ben could get around a little bit when he was young. So, guy. again, I uh, 
the point I made at the start of the season is still the point I'm I'm saying today. Are you picking Josh Allen to win an MVP or beat Patrick Mahomes this year? You picking them? People are saying that now. That's like a thing okay. people are saying. So okay. assuming I don't okay. got him as an MVP, I'll tell you that much. So if I'm he talking does, about the Chiefs thing, not the MVP. If thing. he doesn't win, let's say they don't win the Super Bowl. They don't win the Super Bowl and he doesn't win MVP. What he's is the high young quarterback in the NFL right now? That's what's what Josh Allen's upside? Quarterback wise. Let's compare. I think he's got, upside, I think he's got a short Super Bowl in him. Right. He becomes the hot young quarterback. It's year okay. three for him, and he just his team just went to the AFC championship. Game. Ben Roethlisberger. Fair? We'll say Ben Roethlisberger. Yeah. I think ceiling yeah, as Super Big Bowl Ben is great. Man. What's a Big Ben Topps Chrome PS10 software? It's a great thought. It's I know a Topps sells for $300 as a 10 because I bought one in Dallas in November. That is where the issue I have with Josh Allen is, is what does he have to do to reach, to to justify the price? I don't, I, I, we've done that before and I've thought about it a little what's, bit more. I don't what's this prison go for? A prison, well, silvers are, are that in 2018, it's probably a pop 20. That card, those were extremely rare because they were one per box. A Topps Chrome Ben Roethlisberger is $960. So what's a Josh Allen PS10 Prism? Josh Allen. PS10 Prism. Five hundred dollars was the last sale. Mm-hmm. I'd be curious to know the pops on those. What's I would Lamar, imagine what, what, Lamar. what Lamar come down Lamar, to? Lamar is in Lamar's real trouble. Real trouble. The last Lamar did five twenty. You're telling me Josh Allen and Lamar are pretty yeah. much the same price. The same. That is an important point. And Jason, we need content around Josh Allen and Lamar Jackson's price being the same. One has an MVP, and one doesn't, and they're the same year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, they're, and one's having a down year. One's having a one's having a down year. One's having a uh, a good year. And also, there's the whole other thing where Lamar's cards are extremely hard to grade, intense. So like, and it, this it, this conversation is why we've talked so, uh, why I talk so much about wax as an as a real investment in 2018. If you bought Prism Football, it was Baker Mayfield. Right, they got yeah, Odell, course, they got yeah. Jarvis Landry. You got Baker. You're like, man, Baker's the dude. He's gonna Baker be the real deal. Dude, yeah. And then it was Darnold, right? Darnold was big. Boom. You're like, if you bought only Baker or only Darnold, you those values are not the same if you've kept until this point, mm-hmm. right? Then 2019 comes around. If you had Prism Football Wax, Lamar Jackson, man, comes out of nowhere, wins MVP, dominates. They were, I mean, he looked amazing. Didn't want a playoff game, but looked good. Values are up. So your Baker stash wasn't looking very good, but your Prism 18, 18 boxes were. Now, flash forward to this year, it's Josh Allen. Barkley's hurt. Darnold isn't doing a whole lot. Rosen's Rosen. Baker looks okay, but he's not the, I don't think this is the reason the Browns are winning. Lamar's come down to reality a little bit, and Josh Allen's the guy. This speaks so much to why with Wax, you're throwing a dart at the whole class. Everybody gets a shot. Whereas in, if you just buy an individual player, you're buying that one guy. And it's there's things you can't control. Is he going to get hurt? Does his coach suck? Does he play for Adam Gase? Yeah. Right? There's things you can't control. With Wax, you get everybody in the entire class. It's also very important, I think, this topic alone. Uh, and as you think about what uh, economics, I don't want to talk over my head, whatever. But as a someone that has uh, bought Apple shares... With and just held Apple shares forever. It's like the, you know, the typically this the day they announce the iPhone, the price drops. Similar to you win a championship, price goes down. MVP, down. Like pricing in is very important. And I think if once you start to understand that, then you can get into some different buying patterns. Yeah, you're pricing in like, the winning. Yeah, like right now with NBA, it's like Damian Lillard's going up. Like all these things are priced in of like, this is what they might do. Yeah. The second they c- do it, we're in Christmas right now. 4.30 on Christmas when there's no more presents and it's no longer Christmas Eve. It's like Christmas ain't that hot no more. Home Alone doesn't get much play on 26th in December. Still a good flick. Still a good flick. <laughs> what do you guys think about twenty the twenty twenty one NFL draft class? 
Love it. I was, I, but compared I, compared I to no this idea. year. Uh, I so I, I, my wife and I had a conversation about this the other day. And we were talking about like product and getting boxes and stuff like that. It's a whole different ball game if Trevor Lawrence is serious about not going to the Jets. Has he ever said that? Has no, he ever said that? that like the most he, it might not, ball. but like it, it's not out of the realm of possibility to not want to go play for the Jets. Like, let's just okay. call a spade a spade. I'm not not saying he will, or I'm not saying he won't. I think that's that's it's dude a whole different fan the, talking. The class is a whole different game if he does. Jags fans who are heated. Like, why would he want to go to Jacksonville? But he won't no, want to go to. The I would much rather go to New York. I know. It's just uh, the, my Blaine, the Blaine point Gabbard's living a really terrible life right now. The point I'm bringing up is like. Uh, Burrow, Herbert, uh, Rubs. Were the Cardinals the good? No. The, but compared to Trevor, Justin Fields, 2021 Lance, is Margie. way, way. A very interesting class. 2021 is way bigger if Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields go pro. Trevor Lawrence, is the, yeah. Trevor Lawrence is the biggest thing since Luck. They're not coming back. I think he's a big yeah, thing. coming back. He's a higher grade than Luck, right? I think he's the highest since Manning or Elway. He's the highest grade since Peyton Manning to come out of the NFL. Yeah, I mean, with the way the card market is right now, it's Zion in football. <laughs> and by the way, I just said that. I just said that, and like twenty minutes before we started recording, I was texting my buddies, and I was like, "Yeah, I don't know. I might. I would trade number one overall. Like that's my brain." Is you said so it broken. last week on the episode. All the picks you my, my get. brain is so broken. It's like actually crazy. Yeah. So uh, if, if Trevor Lawrence wants to be a Jet for life. Trevor Lawrence, Justin Fields, Mac Jones, Zach Wilson, Trey Lance, those guys. I mean, you have the two big names at the top. Then you have a couple guys sprinkled in. If Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields are in it, next year's bigger. Yeah. For sure. All right. And then the random guy that two years down the road is going to like be what everyone's chasing. There's good, but there's going to be other big names in this, right? Alabama's got two big receivers. You got the Chase kid, the wide receiver from LSU. Mika yeah. Parsons is a Don't star. Don't let Daniel Jones start six and zero next year. <laughs> Don't let people start chasing Daniel Jones rookies. Where's he going to start six and zero in the NFL? Didn't the Giants beat the Seahawks on the road last week without Daniel Jones? But, uh, okay, Carson Wentz signed a hundred million dollar no, 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 contract. No, I'm, I'm saying I, I, I'm with you. Yeah, like the, the I'm saying I've the Giants are better happen. than people realize. It's the same Fair. argument of like the Bills three years ago were the laughing stock of the league. Last year, I mean, the last couple of years the Browns. around. There was no conversation. Yeah. Baker didn't not go to the Browns. Josh Allen didn't say, I ain't going to the Bills. They lose. It's like a crazy statement to think that Trevor Lawrence is going to come out and be like, Yeah, right, I'm not real- doing Real quick, we were talking about Josh Allen and what he could be, right? Future winnings built in. Gronk underscore cards 87 said, how do you see the value of Patrick Mahomes cards going as his career progressive? Because I think this is important where a lot of people in cards see Patrick Mahomes as the potential to be 1A or 1B. Yeah, all time. He, goes, he goes on the trajectory that Brady goes on. So, oh, I look, I think that um, I guess, uh, well, the way that I am digesting the question as is, it, can I invest? Is there room to f- do quick flips over the next couple of years of Patrick Mahomes? I, I would say, uh, buy him and hold him for as long as humanly possible. If that's what you want to do. And forget because, the cards exist. And forget so the cards. You have exist. the ability to hold a card. With no financial re like you're not concerned about the money at all. Money in the card or you know, money's gone, cards locked up, you're holding it until it, as long as humanly possible. As yeah. long as that possibly yeah. can. But if you need short term return, like I, I don't think again, like we're he talking seems about, about as him safe being as it gets. in as a great. He's yeah. out of control. He threw two picks and it was like the world came crashing down. Yesterday. And had a thirty yard sack and where he didn't fumble. It's like the first time in like <laughs> Forty years. You would think he you would think ring-a-ding? he is. People talk about the. I heard something today about the Chiefs. Like, oh yeah, they're struggling every week. It's like because they don't care because they don't need to. Yet they still like LeBron win. during the season. struggle. Yeah, it's like LeBron. He's like he takes plays off. He takes possessions off, and he's still the best player in the world. Yeah. So yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you guys more. It just he he is the safest football player. 
Yeah. It's not even we close. Talk, we talk about basketball being pretty safe yeah. just because of I think Russell is. Wilson is fairly safe too. I, I, I would I would go out on a limb and say Russell Wilson's fairly safe. I see safe. it more as Rodgers. Uh, yeah, I think I was going to say. Gonna say I would take Rodgers over Wilson. But I think those two guys sure, 100%. Are, are in that combo. Breeze outside doesn't of, get the respect he should out, to be in I that was going to say, outside of Breeze, Brady, and and honestly, I think Roethlisberger is pretty safe. Those guys are going to say Matt Ryan, now. except Matt Ryan is like Jordan Spieth of football. Jordan Spieth has actually won something. Yeah, Matt Ryan has broken a lot of records, but he, Fair. Jordan Spieth will never get the respect that he ever, and he knows it. Because he won't. It'll be interesting to see what happens later for the guys that have been great for the last 15 years. The Matt Ryan's. I mean, Joe Flacco had one of, if not the greatest, postseason run ever when they Mm -hmm. won the Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Uh, Stafford, Philip Rivers, yeah, winning chips. These guys, these guys get lost in time. It's just the way it goes. I'm sure there was a there's plenty of guys in the 80s who were Frank Tinkinton or Tarkenton or whatever. Yeah, no one cares. It's gonna be top 10 in a lot of statistical categories. No one would care about Stafford. Yeah, Dan Marino did the same thing. I know. Mega Dan Marino get thought talked about. Interesting. Tyler, any questions? Nope. I'm good. Lou, anything before we wrap it up? It's been a journey. It's a strong hour. Yeah. Recap episode coming next week. We'll talk about the first 24 full episodes of Car Talk, what that was like, some of our highlights for the season, and then we'll get into – Tyler, are we going to talk much about season two? Uh, We'll we'll give a little – yeah, we'll give a little action on season two next week. Excited for that. Some big things in store and planned. One more episode. See you guys next week. Happy holidays, everyone. Peace.